thinking it might be time for us to retire. Shut up, Clyde. Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst makeup jobs in movies. Better take a look around upstairs, something's fishy. For this list, we'll be looking at the most puzzling, odd, and downright unsettling hair, makeup, and costuming blunders in film. Let us know which makeup you think looks the worst in the comments. Number 10, Jared Leto's old age makeup, Mr. Nobody. Is your name Daniel Jones? Of course not. In the 2009 sci-fi drama Mr. Nobody, Jared Leto plays the protagonist Nemo Nobody at the ages of 34 and 118 years old. This massive age gap required the actor to undergo an extensive centenarian transformation and makeup was used to age him. My age. The candles cost more than the cake. However, the results are, for lack of better words, a little unsettling. From the thick and heavy prosthetics to the dramatically saggy skin texture, Nemo's elderly self looks fake and unnatural. If Mr. Nobody's makeup blunders prove anything, it is that, unfortunately, we cannot all age gracefully. Number 9. Vin Diesel's wig. Find me guilty. Jackie D don't rack. Jackie D won't ever rack. Since Vin Diesel burst onto the scene in the early 2000s, he's become well known for two things, his deep voice and his bald head. In 2006, the Fast and the Furious actor pivoted from his usual action-based flicks to something different in the legal dramedy, Find Me Guilty. I've read the RICO Act and I can tell you it's more appropriate for some of those guys over in Washington than it is for me or any of my fellas here. In the picture, Diesel portrays real-life gangster Jackie DiNorcio, who acted as his own legal defense while on trial in the 1980s. For the role, Diesel wore a hairpiece that can only be described as a head scratcher. What'd you say? The hairline of the wig was pushed back so far that he might as well have been bald. Plus, it looks nothing like Dinorcio's actual hair. Number eight, Leonardo DiCaprio and Army Hammer's aged up makeup, J. Edgar. Aging an actor through the use of makeup is no small feat. It can take a lot of patience and trial and error, and sometimes, well, it just doesn't work out. Case in point, Leonardo DiCaprio and Army Hammer in Clint Eastwood's 2011 drama, J. Edgar. President Johnson. Wait. Clyde. Wait. You're gonna have to learn to enunciate. I can't seem to understand you. There is something so off-putting about seeing DiCaprio, who would have been about 36 at the time, in this makeup. If anything ever happens to me, I need you to do something for me, do you understand? Of course. He looks stiff, and like he's having trouble moving his face, and something about his eyes makes the artificiality of this look very apparent. Those eyebrows certainly aren't doing him any favours either. I should have never given you your job, Clyde. You know that. Number seven, Joseph Gordon-Levitt's makeup, Looper. This next makeup transformation threw us for a loop, pun very much intended. In order to look like a younger version of co-star Bruce Willis in Looper, Joseph Gordon-Levitt underwent an extensive makeover. This is my life now. I earned it. You had yours already. So why don't you do what old men do and die? According to the actor, the process took three hours at the start of every day of filming. While we're sure a lot of thought and careful planning went into this, the attempt kind of falls short. None of this concerns me. This is gonna happen to you, it you happened to you. It doesn't have to happen to me. Even with the makeup, it's hard to see any resemblance between the two actors. Paired with the slick back hair, Gordon Levitt might look like a younger counterpart to someone, but it certainly isn't Bruce Willis. Long as Abe's got one gat man standing, he's gonna be hunting you till his dying day. Number six, Channing Tatum's half canine transformation, Jupiter Ascending. 2015's sci-fi odyssey Jupiter Ascending was a box office bomb, and even went on to be nominated for a handful of Razzies. Despite having an all-star cast including Mila Kunis, Eddie Redmayne, and Channing Tatum, Jupiter Ascending was pulled apart by both critics and moviegoers. Even the film's makeup design wasn't safe from their criticism. Jupiter. Is that your name? Arena. Tatum's character, Kane Wise, is supposed to be a half-human and half-dog. However, thanks to some pointy ears and contact lenses, Wise looks more like Celestial Elf than Canine. I have more in common with a dog than I have with you. I love dogs. 
between the heavy eyeliner and frosted beard, I'm not sure what the desired effect was supposed to be, but it's definitely otherworldly. You get down there and you start digging. Number five, Al Pacino's character maker, Dick Tracy. A dirty lips. You need a bat. Not the bat! Not the bat! Big boy, not the bat! Sure, Dick Tracy is based on a famed comic strip, so cartoonish elements were bound to find their way into the 1990 live action movie adaptation. That being said, Al Pacino's appearance looks like it leapt right off the page. Ma, 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 ma. The renowned actor portrayed mobster Alfonso Big Boy Caprice, and the design team strove to honor Chester Gould's illustrations by making the character's appearances similar to the source material. What resulted was Pacino's face covered in heavy prosthetics, including an exaggerated bulbous chin and the appearance of larger eyes. I got to hand it to you, big boy. You got the best bros in town. Top drawer. Nothing about him looked vaguely human, but since the team was striving for an animated look, this one might just be a success. Number four, Jackie Earl Haley's Freddy Krueger makeup, a nightmare on Elm Street. You have nothing to worry about. This won't hurt. One little bit. This makeover transformation is terrifying for all the wrong reasons. In 2010, the horror franchise A Nightmare on Elm Street resurrected its villainous killer, Freddy Krueger, to scare a new generation of moviegoers. Ready or not, here I come. Actor Jackie Earl Haley assumed the role that Robert Englund made famous. Instead of replicating Kruger's look from the 80s, however, they opted to go for a more realistic take on the character. A little Nancy, now that you got me, what game do you want to play next? In an attempt to make his skin look burnt, the crew used a mix of makeup and CGI. However, he kind of just looks like he's melting rather than burned, and it's just not as scary as the OG Freddy. Number three, Helena Bonham Carter's hair, Planet of the Apes. Tim Burton's 2001 endeavor, Planet of the Apes, was incredibly ambitious. It was remaking an iconic 1968 cinematic classic, which meant it had big shoes to fill. What will he find out there, Doctor? His destiny. One of its biggest undertakings was turning its cast into apes. Just like its predecessor, the film's makeup design was crucial to its success, and thanks to the prosthetics designed by Rick Baker, it pulled it off. Extremism and defense of apes is no vice, Senator. Even critics highlighted Baker's works in their reviews. However, there was one transformation that just didn't land. While Helena Bonham Carter's prosthetics looked great, her wig, not so much. Why should be so difficult? Not only did her character's hair look styled and blown out, it also had highlights. Number two, Ryan Reynolds' suit, just friends. I swear by the moon and the stars in the sky. In the 2005 rom com Just Friends, Ryan Reynolds plays a record exec who returns home for the holidays and reconnects with his former high school BFF and crush played by Amy Smart. The film opens with a flashback to Reynolds' character's teenage years, and the actor wears facial prosthetics, which looks totally unrealistic. But that isn't the real problem about this scene. It's the fact that Reynolds is wearing a bodysuit. Here we go. Okay. The use of the garment has been a long-standing issue within the film industry. Not only is it offensive and harmful, it just doesn't look great either. Oh my god! Sadly, Just Friends is only one example of this ridiculous practice. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Ice-T's prosthetics. 
Tank Girl. Shut up! Ain't gonna be no crumpets and tea! 1995's dystopian sci-fi flick Tank Girl is a wild and wacky adventure that includes some of the most trippy makeup effects captured on film. For instance, rapper Ice-T portrays a character named T-Saint, who is a ripper, which means he's a being that has the DNA of both a human and a kangaroo. Booger, huh? Try not to speak. Upon first seeing him, you'd think T-Saint might look more like a dog than a sub-kangaroo, thanks to his canine-like snout and floppy ears. Although the look very much fits the Tank Girl universe and aesthetic, something about this is just straight up weird. Just speak face and west. We'll hear you all right. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.